Yesterday, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced the brand new Raspberry Pi 4 heatsink and fan combination for the official Raspberry Pi 4 case. Now, a lot of people seem excited about this. I'm a little mixed about it, but let's go ahead and see exactly what it is. They're offering a $5 heatsink and fan combination that's a plug and play directly into the Raspberry Pi Model 4 with the official Raspberry Pi 4 case. Now, if you look at the graphs we're gonna see later, what they're claiming is that any kind of overclocking or any kind of maxing out of the CPU, GPU, you're going to see it not throttle with this setup where users have experienced throttling in the past. And with that kind of price tag, it's pretty cool. I think the reason they're doing this is twofold. One, it's more news for the Raspberry Pi, which stimulates sales and people are talking about it. And two, I think Raspberry Pi Foundation is realizing that they're missing out on so many sales because the aftermarket case and fan and cooling, it's just, it's just the massive. You go on Amazon right now, you'll see literally hundreds of options between the different boards that are out there. Now myself, it's not actually $5, it's something that's kind of misleading to me, um, but the community as a whole, if you look at the comments of this video and everything else, they seem kind of excited. And I guess if I already have a Raspberry Pi 4 foundation case, um, it could be cool that I can just drop into my local micro center and pay $5. But this is where I wanted to talk about price a little bit. If you go to Kanakit or Vilros or uh, Adafruit, now again, I'm in the United States and I know some of these companies are international, but Vilros, for example, yes, it's $5, but the minute I entered in my zip code, you can see here it has $8 shipping. Thus, it's not really a $5. Uh, item. Moving on to the next uh, purveyor here, Canakit. They were the highest at $9.95, but I believe they're in Canada. Uh, so I think that's why it's a little bit more for me. Now, Adafruit was by far the cheapest for me at $5 for USPS first class or $10 for UPS ground. But as you see here, the price is actually going to cost me, uh, because I don't have a micro center nearby, it's actually going to cost me $8 to $12. And but with Cyber Monday, you could you could have purchased a case with a fan, with a heatsink. for There's some for $5, $6. The Flirt case was $10. So for me, I'm not impressed, but again, I don't think that was the purpose. I think overall, the Raspberry Pi Foundation is going to steal some of the sales away from all these vendors here on the Amazons and on the you know other websites, uh, eBay, et cetera. Now, um, this fan is slightly different than the fans you'll see on Amazon. This fan does have an extra GPIO um, a connector which does let you uh, code and regulate the fan and I think a lot of people are excited about that and then the other thing being that a lot of people already have this case lying around so I think that's really the big selling point there although remember there's way better cases out there so here it is here's the fan as you see there there's not only a power and a ground there's that blue cable there which is the cable that connects your GPIO which will allow you to modulate the fan a little bit um, we're gonna see the graphs here and see the performance uh, a little bit but basically you know they had some throttling issues with the original case and this is going to solve those issues especially for power users um, you know the fan looks good I imagine they probably trialed and aired a lot of different uh, fans right because some fans prematurely fail some fans are loud they did not address the noise of this fan I don't think I read anything about it but I imagine they're not gonna send you a freaking jet engine in the mail I think that would just be bad PR especially something that they know most users care about which is the noise level as well um, so it's it fairly simple the heatsink there is huge massive I'm sure it does work really well the bigger the heatsink the better it's going to dissipate the heat right it has the heat can go out um, so I think you know you will see some pretty good cooling uh, with this application and I think people are gonna be satisfied with what it does now um, here is the first graph you see here is running all the cores but without any case whatsoever just the Raspberry Pi 4 B board by itself and as you see, the Raspberry Pi doesn't start throttling until 70 degrees, no throttling issues while maxing out all four cores. But the minute you put it in a case, it is like putting it, you know, wearing a jacket in the hot sun. It's just going to keep that heat inside and the heat will not dissipate. So again, this first graph, it's just no case, quad core, maxing out the cores. Now, the minute you put it in this official Raspberry Pi 4 case without this new fan and heat sink, you will experience some throttling, especially when you're maxing out those cores. 
Now, the average user wasn't maxing out their cores all the time. They were, you know, using the internet and writing code. And so they had no problems as far as uh, that. But the minute you start overclocking or the minute you start, you know, really putting the CPU, you're rendering something or you're doing something that requires, you know, playing emulation Nintendo 64, something that's very powerful on the, the Pi, you will see it throttle and you'll have some issues. Now here, they um, on this one below, they ran the same test with the new heatsink and um, you know uh, fan combination. So as you see now, it doesn't even come close to 70. The top line is 70 on the on the graph uh, below, and it doesn't even throttle whatsoever. So as far as is it sucking air, is it pushing air out? They say it draws air in over the USB slots and ethernet connectors, passes it over a small thin heat sink attached to the processor and exhausts it through the SD card slot. So that is what it's doing. It's adding airflow in order to cool that heat sink as it warms up and get that hot air out of there. So I did want to point you all to some fans in case they're just way better. Now this is a baller solution, $39.99. But I even did a video on this and I'll show you in a second, but uh, $39.99 you get the low profile ice tower case plus a metal uh, enclosure. It's by far the best cooling solution that's readily available. Like they, they have plenty of stock. Now this would be my best passive cooling and active cooling. These little armor cases here with the dual fans, you can get it without the dual fans if you want passive, but it's still not gonna block that Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and it's still gonna be plenty cooling. It's just a massive heat sink. Um, and then as long as you're in a pretty cool room, it should be fine. Uh, but you know, a lot of this, you know, application can vary depending on location. Now Argon One, a great solution, actively cooled, great case, a lot of protection for $25. Then you just have the heat sink itself. If you don't need a case, you know, just go ahead and get the low profile, uh, you know, or the high profile, uh, you know, ice tower case. You know, this has been reviewed many, many times. It's a great solution. Um, now, this was by far the best cooling solutions I've ever reviewed in my life. This is a guy on Etsy who makes these little enclosures, and I think he might be, he stopped doing it for a while and he started doing it. You know, you might find it, you may not, but it has an ice tower case and then he added two additional fans, huge fans. And this thing, is, you should watch the video on this, the cooling performance. I mean, it's literally like leaving your pie in a refrigerator. I've yet to see a better application than that. I've reviewed a lot of cases, and that one just is like, pfft. yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, and then here's that the one that's readily available, because like I said, the other one was a guy from Etsy. This one is the one for $39.99 on Amazon. You get the ice tower case and the metal enclosure. Um, so it's a nice solution. So my final thoughts are, it's great marketing for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Am I gonna buy one? No, because I don't even have an official case. I do think that people who have the official case will buy this, and why not? It's, you know, it, I would rather have this than not have it. Now, as you saw in the video though, I've reviewed many other aftermarket cases that are just way better, 10 times better in so many reasons, in price, in performance, um, in application, uh, in looks, you know, they, they just are better. Now, um, I think that a lot of this is like Apple computers. I think that some people who are just, you know, just gung ho for anything Pi are gonna say, you know, are gonna, they're gonna protect anything that Raspberry Pi Foundation does. Just like a heavy Apple user, they'll protect anything that Apple says. Um, with me, I'm always a little skeptical. I wanna check it out, see what's really going on. And like I said, I can see them doing this for two main reasons. One, they see the secondary market selling a ton of these. It's an easy profit center for them. And two, everyone goes crazy whenever the Raspberry Pi Foundation has a new announcement. I also think it's a natural progression from the Raspberry Pi 400. The 400 was the first Raspberry Pi that had some kind of cooling attached to the actual computer itself. So I can see them going in this direction more often and doing more accessories. With that said, that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.